everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for tea time today. We have a little bit of misty morning and that is it. Hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is going to be a tech day and an update. A lot of people want to know how much wind can Starlink's dish actually handle? Well, we did a real world test on it and I'm going to tell you exactly what the answer is there before the end of this video. So once again, today is going to be an update before this weekend. And this weekend is going to be a lot of cleanup because if you watched my last video, I was telling you about preparations, right? And how to prep for the hurricane, the pending hurricane at the time, which was Hurricane Ian. So I want to preface this video with saying thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for all the well wishes. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. That just, there were so many. Um, I tried answering all of them. If I didn't get to you, just understand that I'm very grateful for all of you being here. And I'm thankful for all of those well wishes that were sent. Really do appreciate that. Like I said, in my last video, I talked about hurricane preparation and I put together a list that I've came up with over the last 20 plus years of going through hurricanes down here in South Florida. And a lot of you added to that list as I asked for you to do in the comment area below. So if you didn't see that video, go check that out. And once again, read the comments on that video to get additional um, things that you should be doing and things that you should be caring about keeping and what to do and what not to do and that type of thing. So check that video out. I think it was very informative and I think it could be helpful, not just today or yesterday during Hurricane Ian, but future hurricanes or disasters that can possibly hit all of us. We really don't know. As I told you in my last video, my daughter and her fiance came to us because we are inland because they were directly in the path of this storm. And this storm was just under a category five. That is the biggest or the most powerful storm ranking, let's say. So it was 155 miles per hour and 157 miles per hour, two miles per hour more would be considered a hurricane cat five. So it was quite devastating and there is still a lot of folks over there that are in some really terrible times right now. So as of an hour ago, we called their electrical company and there is still no power um, where she is. And there is just a ton of people without power over there. Now we are inland here and just on the side of Lake Okeechobee and we were still getting gusts of well over 75 miles per hour. But more importantly is, was the number of tornadoes that were spawned out of this hurricane. And whenever you're on that dirty side, as I was telling you guys about in the last video, when you're on that right-hand side or the eastern side, there is a lot of tornadic, let's say, weather that ends up happening. So there was a lot of tornadoes. And after the hurricane was over, we ended up going into the golf cart to survey the neighborhood. And there had to be at least three or four touchdown just in our neighborhood alone. And the amount of damage that they do in just a small area is just amazing to me, the power that these things have. So as I said, on the other coast, there's a lot of people without power. Right now there, I think there was like a million or two million people, Floridians without power due to Hurricane Ian. So there is a lot of people suffering right now and trying to figure out how to fix things that are just forever broken. There are barrier islands on the west coast of Florida that will never look the same. So it was a lot of devastation. Now for me, I ended up being without power for 23 hours altogether. And some of you guys will be, that's a lot. Well, that's nothing compared to a lot of other people out there. As I stated, being without power for 23 hours was a long time, but being prepared, like you saw in that list, we had the necessities to be able to get through it. Now on the golf cart while I was driving around, I ended up finding a supervisor to FPL. That is Florida Power and Light, our electrical company. And I said, listen, we're without power. Is there anything you can do? He said, can you uh, take me to your house? And I'm like, yeah, sure. So we're driving the golf cart and we ended up showing him the problem. He called in literally the Calvary. There was, I think about six trucks or something. There was a whole bunch of people fixing the line, fixing the transformer. The, one of the actual lines pulled out of the transformer. It was like a wreck. 
So they ended up fixing the whole thing up. And I, I know that if I didn't find this guy, we would still be without power because the ticket that I ended up getting um, was not even being looked at yet. So we were very fortunate that way. Anyways, we do have power now, thankfully, and that's why I'm able to make this video for you. And once again, this is more of an update and a thank you video. Now, many of you guys asked me, did you leave Starlink Dish or Dishy or as I call him, Mr. Bevel up or did you take him down? And if you left them up, how much damage was there? So I'm gonna to get to that before the end of this video. But once again, I wanna update a couple of things. Um, number one, I ended up doing some real world testing as the storm was getting close. Now that's what I do, right? I test for you guys. I tested two routers, but real world tests. Whereas normally we're doing tests where we're going to try failover or fail back. And I would just yank like WAN one or ISP one to see if it would fail over to ISP two. And we would do testing that way. But doing real world tests is completely different. And I did a real world test on one of the routers. Router number one was a Ubiquity. It was the Edge Router, the Edge Router X, I believe it's called the SFP. And while it did move from WAN one to WAN two, like once, it didn't want to move back properly. And then sometimes it would switch, but then it wouldn't. So it just, it didn't work well in real world. Router number two, on the other hand, I had really high hopes for, and that was a Synology. It was the RT2600 AC. And while it wasn't like a router that I would say, this is going to be a great dual WAN router to be able to do failover. If you don't know what failover is, is basically you have two ISPs and when one goes down, the other one picks up the slack, so to speak. And when the one comes back up, it'll shift back over to that one. Similar to load balancing, but with failover, you're not load balancing, you're just swapping back and forth. Anyways, I really had high hopes for the Synology and while it did so well in the basic test where I would just pull WAN one out, and then plug it back in, it switched immediately. I'm like, this thing is awesome. It doesn't even supposed to, it doesn't even supposed to do this very well, right? But I just tried it and it's like, I'm like, I'm sold. I was gonna tell you guys about this router last week, but I didn't and I'm glad that I didn't. Because while in the basic testing of just pulling them out just worked so well, I was doing live streaming and it literally wouldn't even spool. It would switch and swap from one to the other immediately. I mean, better than routers that were like two times the cost, right? Well, when real world happened and rubber hit the road, guess what? It didn't switch at all. So while it would switch, when you just yanked the ethernet out of, let's say WAN one, it would switch to WAN two and you put it back in and then it would switch from WAN two back to WAN one. In real world, it just wouldn't switch at all. The only way to switch was to be able to log into it and say, swap. You know, just click on the button. And for a lot of you guys, that might be enough. So while the router didn't work as I wanted it to, remember, I'm trying to find a router for you guys that you're able to live stream and not have a hiccup. Do a conference call and not have a hiccup, a Google meeting or whatever. That's my goal for you guys. Because a lot of folks out there are gamers or they're live streaming, they're doing Twitch or whatever, and they need something to do this. And while we know the only way to truly do it is to get that bonding, a bonded pair almost, let's call it, but external, and then use it that way. And I'll get into that in future videos. But for the most part, we want to get something that would fail over quickly or quick enough, all right? And this one just did it in spades. I mean, it was just amazing. Once again, that is that Synology. I'll put both of these routers down below. I'll put a link to them. So if you wanna go check them out, go check them out. Now, the day before the storm, we received in a new router to test out. And that is this one. It's a PEP link. You see that? This is the PEP, I didn't even open it yet. Anyways, this is the box. Um, it is a PEP link Balance 20X. Now, if you watched any of my other router videos about the PEP link, the PEP link was awesome. It was a kick ass, just kick ass router. It worked really well. But the problem was, is we had the PEP link balance 20, which maxed out at 120 megabits. So, 
for a lot of you guys that have Starlink or fiber or fat cable, as I call it, right, cable, well, 150 megabits is just not enough because like with Starlink, it should be able to hit about 250, 300 on a good day. There hasn't been too many of those good days lately, but that's for another video. But for a lot of other folks out there that once again have fiber or fat cable, 150 megabits is not enough. So we ended up returning that and getting this one in. So I can't wait to put this one through its paces. And once I do, I'm going to report back to you. And I'm going to let you know, what do I think about it? Does it work for what I'm looking for and maybe what you're looking for? And the positives and the negatives and the costs and all the rest of the stuff that I do on these router reviews that I do. That all said, coming back to the first question was, how did your dish fare? Was the Starlink dish left up? And if it was, did it take damage? How much wind was it able to handle? Well, I ended up leaving it up. Now, I did some research and I found that it's supposed to handle about 65 mile per hour winds. So I figured being on the side of the storm that we were, and it was going to come on shore just north of us, I figured 60, 70 miles per hour, 75 is probably gonna be all that we're gonna get. And while I was right, I forgot to take into account tornadoes. On the dirty side of the hurricane, like I've talked to you guys about before, on the eastern side, let's say the right-hand side of those hurricanes in the northern hemisphere, it spawns a ton of hurricanes. That's just how it is. Tornadic type of weather is very highly likely on that side. And we got a ton of it, all right? So that was the one factor that I did not take into consideration. If I did, I probably would have taken the dish down because during tornadoes, you don't know what those speeds are going to be. They could be 60 mile per hour. They could be 100 plus mile per hour in a tornado. And you just really don't know. And in Florida, we don't get massive tornadoes like in Kansas or something when they're like a half a mile big. No, we get these small isolated like micro type of burst tornadoes that are in like a small area, but they're strong, but tiny, right? And they just rip through. So that's exactly what we got. In this neighborhood, we got hit with about three or four tornadoes. And of course, my property got hit with one. So there was papaya trees that were literally ripped out of the ground. Some were actually broken in half. Um, Cypress bent over a lot of damage in certain isolated areas as it ripped through the property. So the dish did go through a tornado, but what those wind speeds were, I have not a clue. But for the tornado to rip trees out and snap them, I'm gonna guess they're probably good over 100 mile per hour. That's what I'm guessing. Do I know? No. But we do know that the dish was able to handle about 65 to 75 mile per hour gusts without a problem. And the bottom line was the dish fared unscathed. I could not believe it, but there was absolutely nothing wrong with it. The only thing was, was one of the wires was ripped off. Probably a branch flew by and ripped off the wire, the ethernet wire, just a little bit off the roof. And that's it. I just need to re-glue that on and we're good. The dish itself works perfectly. It stows perfectly. It moves perfectly. Um, the speeds are the same as they were before. So it ended up handling these winds. Once again, 65, 75 miles per hour, absolutely no problem. And possibly a hundred plus during that tornado that ripped through. So that is really good, really good news. I was, I was surprised by it. And like I said, if I would have thought about the tornadic weather, which I should have, because I've gone through this so many times, I probably would have taken it down but I didn't. So we ended up doing a real world test accidentally. <laughs> so all in all, the power is back up. I'm making videos once again. Uh, Monday, I'm gonna start this cycle and I'm gonna give you a lot of content going forward. Anything that you wanna know, just ask me in the comments below this video. Anyways, this video was once again to say thank you and to give you an update on the storm and let you know about the routers and what happened with the dish and all of this stuff. But most importantly, I wanted to once again say thank you for the kind wishes. All of those well wishes that went out to myself and my family, I did forward those on to my family. Thank you so much. Thank you. So 
Anyways, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more Starlink videos, I made a Starlink playlist. Go check that out. There's probably like 80 plus videos now. A ton of Starlink content about helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to buy, what not to buy, why to buy it. Why is always the most important thing. Also, if you haven't checked out any of my eBooks, they're free just for you being here. Go check them out. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. If you enjoyed this video, even in the least, please consider throwing it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel and clicking this little button over here, notification button. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's all, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Love you all.